let's try this molecule. Let's decide uh, whether it is aromatic or not. Well, we need to count uh, the number of pi electrons. Let's start with the double bonds. Uh, there are one, two, three, four, five, six double bonds. Uh, and each of those uh, double bonds has one pi bond with two pi electrons. So from the one, two, three, four, five, six double bonds, we should be getting 12 pi electrons. 12 pi electrons from the double bonds. But how about the triple bond? Uh, we know that the triple bond actually consists of one sigma and two pi bonds. So how are we going to deal with that? Uh, well, it's going to be easier to deal with uh, that if instead of drawing things as double and triple bonds, we instead draw in the p orbitals. So I'm going to erase all the double and triple bonds here and replace that with p orbitals. So, so far, uh, I've erased all the double bonds, and I replaced all the double bonds with overlapping p orbitals. We know that each of the pi bonds and the double bonds consists of side-to-side -side overlapping p orbitals. Um, and you can see that these p orbitals all are overlapping with each other in a kind of conjugated system. Why are we able to have overlapping p orbitals in every atom in the ring? Because all of these p orbitals are parallel to each other. They're all vertical. So notice that this p orbital is overlapping not just with this one, but it's overlapping as part of a system. This overlaps with this, which overlaps with this, which overlaps with this. That's what it means to say that the p orbitals are conjugated with each other. Now, how about this carbon, which was one of the triple bonded carbons? What's the hybridization of a triple bonded carbon? Well, this triple bonded carbon is attached to two atoms and has no lone pairs. So it should be sp hybridized. Uh, because since it's attached to two atoms, we need two hybridized orbitals, one s and one p. And remember from our earlier work, what exactly are the valence orbitals of an sp hybridized atom? What exactly are the valence orbitals of an sp hybridized atom? Well, we saw that an sp hybridized atom has two sp orbitals and two unhybridized p orbitals. So this carbon has two sp orbitals and two unhybridized p orbitals. Now, where are we going to put the p orbitals? Well, I can show one p orbital like this, and a p orbital on this carbon as well. And we know that that is going to form one of our pi bonds between these two carbons. And we can do the same for these triple bonded carbons down here, showing one p orbital on each of those. So now I've drawn p orbitals at every carbon in the ring. And I've also shown the electrons in those p orbitals. So we have the 12 pi electrons um, that uh, we had from the double bonds. And now I've also shown the electrons in these sp hybridized carbons, p orbitals. So two pi electrons here, two pi electrons here, and two pi electrons here. That gives us six more pi electrons. These two, these two, and these two. And now we can clearly see that this molecule is completely conjugated. Remember, what does completely conjugated mean? It means side-to-side -side overlapping p orbitals at every atom in the ring. Well, notice that all of these p orbitals are vertical. All of the p orbitals are vertical, so they are forming a complete, unbroken, conjugated system of overlapping p orbitals, starting here and going all the way around the ring. Now, we still have to draw the second p orbital on each of the triple bonded carbons. Where should we draw that second p orbital? Recall we said earlier in the videos that we can think that p stands for perpendicular. Each p orbital on an atom is always perpendicular to any other hybridized orbitals on that atom, and any p orbital is always perpendicular to all the other p orbitals on that atom. A p orbital on an atom is always perpendicular to any of the other p orbitals on that atom. We could think that p stands for perpendicular. Since I've drawn this p orbital as being vertical, I'm going to have to draw the other p orbital as being horizontal. 
now you can see that at, this, uh, at these triple bonded carbons, we've also drawn in the second pair of p orbitals. And you can see the second pair of p orbitals is perpendicular to the first pair, whereas the first pair of p orbitals was vertical, the second pair of p orbitals is horizontal. And that gives us our second pi bond here, and that gives two more electrons. And I've done the same thing at this triple bond. I've drawn in two more horizontal p orbitals to give the second pi bond at this carbon down here. Uh, unfortunately, I can't really, or it's hard to draw the other p orbitals at these carbons. Uh, I can't draw them horizontally because we've also already shown the sigma bonds as being horizontal. If we've shown, and remember that the p orbital is supposed to be perpendicular to uh, the other p orbital and to the sigma bonds. Um, so if I've already shown this is vertical and this is horizontal, where's the remaining p orbital? Well, the remaining p orbital must be pointing into and out of the board. So this piece of chalk could indicate the p, uh, one lobe of the p orbital on this carbon. You can see how this piece of chalk is perpendicular to the, uh, to the vertical p orbital. And then we could have this piece of chalk showing, uh, indicating the other p orbital on this carbon that is again perpendicular to the sigma bond and to the vertical p orbital. Well, we can't draw then uh, on the board exactly what that p orbital looks like, but you get the basic idea. I'll draw that p orbital like this. Notice that I kind of drew the back lobe as being dashed and the front lobe as kind of being wedged to indicate that actually this p orbital is pointing straight out and into the board. And this p orbital is pointing straight out and into the board. And then there would be an electron in each of those. Now the important thing to see is that these horizontal p orbitals are not part of the conjugated system. These horizontal p orbitals are not part of the conjugated system because clearly they can't overlap with the p orbitals at any of the other atoms in the ring. All the p orbitals at, the, at all the other atoms in the ring are vertical. So these horizontal p orbitals are not part of the conjugated system. They can't overlap with them, which means that we should not count these electrons as pi electrons. We should only count the electrons in the overlapping vertical p orbitals. We should not count the pi electrons in the horizontal non-overlapping p orbitals. So how many pi electrons are the triple bonds contributing? Well, this triple bond is contributing two electrons, this triple bond is contributing two electrons, and this triple bond is contributing two electrons, which again gave us six pi electrons total. How about the electrons in the horizontal p orbitals? We don't count those. So there are six more pi electrons in the horizontal p orbitals but we don't count those electrons. So the total number of electrons we're counting is 18. 18 is in this list. If you take 14 and add four to get the next element, you'll see that 18 is in the list for being aromatic. So this compound is aromatic. Uh, now we can see that when we stated Huckel's rule before, we left something out. We said that you should count all of the pi electrons and test whether it's in this list or this list, but actually that's not 100% correct. We're actually not counting all the pi electrons. We're only counting the pi electrons in the completely conjugated system. We're only counting the pi electrons in the completely conjugated system of p orbitals. The completely conjugated system of p orbitals is the set of p orbitals that's overlapping all the way around the ring. Here, the vertical p orbitals are overlapping all the way around the ring. That's the completely conjugated set of p orbitals. So we want to count the electrons in those p orbitals. We're not counting the electrons in the horizontal um, p orbitals here, even though they are pi electrons. These are pi electrons because they're in overlapping p orbitals, but they're not part of a system of p orbitals that is overlapping at every atom in the ring. That's the reason that we leave them out. So to summarize that again, when we're counting the electrons for Huckel's rule, um, we know that the molecule can only be aromatic or anti-aromatic if there's a completely conjugated set of p orbitals. That is, side to side overlapping p orbitals at every atom in the ring. And we should only count the pi electrons that are in that set 
of completely conjugated p orbitals. We should not count any pi electrons um, that are outside of that set. We should not count any pi electrons that are in p orbitals that are not completely conjugated with all the other p orbitals in the ring. So what it comes down to is that anytime you have a triple bond, one of the pi bonds will contribute electrons for Huckel's rule, and one of the pi bonds will not contribute electrons for Huckel's rule. Because in any triple bond, you can only have one set of p orbitals that's overlapping with the other p orbitals in the ring. The other set of p orbitals has to be perpendicular to the other p orbitals in the ring. 